Today we're going to take a look at and show you how to install the Byers Electric 12 volt A-frame trailer jack offering 22 and a half inches of travel and a 3,500 pound capacity. The part number is 337-009-3500. Now this electric A-frame trailer jack from Byers is going to do a great job of helping you hook up your trailer and disconnect it from your vehicle without cranking on it for an extended period of time. And what you'll notice different about this jack as compared to a lot of other electric jacks out there that this one has its own cable that we're going to run to our seven pole on our vehicle and as long as that has 12 volt power everything's going to work for you. Traditionally with a jack you would either have to wire it to your seven pole plug via the junction box or run wires back to an onboard battery. So while you will have both the cable for the jack and for your trailer here you're not going to have to worry about that additional wiring. Now the switch located right here on the bottom allows us to move that jack up or down. We go forward, we're going to retract it or lower the trailer. And then by pushing rearward on it, it's going to raise the trailer. Now when retracting our jack, it runs pretty common with all the other levels of noise that we get from jacks. However, when extending it, it does seem to be a little bit louder. Now that doesn't negatively affect the performance of the jack, of course, it's just a difference in volumes that we've seen. Now a couple things I really like about the design of this jack, it's just really slim. The motor housing's not all that large, the gear housing here is not all that large, and if you're working with tighter spaces, that could really be an advantage for you. Something else I really like, the motor housing, the outer tube of the jack, and the switch panel here all have a really nice heavy duty black powder coat finish. It has that matte finish to it. And then that combined with the inner tube, which offers the clear zinc finish, same as the foot plate, should really offer us great corrosion resistance. Now, not only does the foot plate allow us to drop this down and make a lot less work for our jack, but it also has a five and a half inch diameter plate here on the bottom. That's gonna help to prevent like the inner tube from sinking down into softer ground. It's going to spread that energy out over a greater area. Now also located here at the top, we've got a small bubble level. That's going to help us to initially get our trailer level or if you want to ensure that you've got a little bit of a rise to it for rain runoff, we can accomplish that there. But located underneath, we also have our manual override. We'll use a Phillips screwdriver. We want to pull out the three small Phillips screws. And once we've got that moved out of the way, we can take our manual override handle, place it down and on, and that's going to allow us to operate our jack. In this situation, being able to go up and down with it, whether your battery in your trailer has failed or maybe the plug on the back of your vehicle, we can still attach or detach our trailer. And something I do enjoy about it or like about it anyway is that this handle's a little bit longer than what we see out of some of them. So it makes it a little bit easier. We have a little bit more leverage to operate it. Now, while this is an option that most of your electric jacks are gonna have, it seems like this is a little bit more labor intensive getting this off. In most cases, you're gonna have a rubber plug or a rubber cap that you'll remove. In this case, you're gonna need a Phillips screwdriver handy. Now, as you're extending the jack, once it reaches its highest point, it's gonna shut off, or at least you'll hear the motor dim down indicating to you that you've reached the maximum. That helps to protect both the motor and gears from any kind of damage. Now with our jack fully extended, we're going to give you a measurement to what they call the bracket. Basically it's the top of the coupler. Looks like that's going to be right at 32 inches. If we were to reduce that by the four and a half inches that we have in our drop wave, it's going to be 27 and a half. When we retract the jack, it's going to operate in that same manner. Once it gets to its lowest point, it's going to stop for us. Now with our jack fully retracted, it's going to be at about 14. So if we reduce that drop leg by four and a half, it's about nine and a half. Now to give us an idea of the room we need above the jack, we're going to go from that bracket again. And it looks like it's going to be right at about 19 and a half inches to the top of our level. Now to begin your installation, of course, you'll need your old jack removed. When you take that off, hang on to your hardware. The jack's not going to come with any hardware. If you need to replace it, you need to use 3 8 at a minimum grade 5 bolts. 
But outside of that, the only real requirement you're gonna have is the two and a quarter inch opening here on your coupler. That's a pretty common size. And at that point, I'm just gonna lower it down in. Now you'll see we've got our trailer supported with jack stands. If you don't have jack stands available, you could leave this coupled to your truck and remove your jack that way too, whatever you prefer. And you'll see our three oblong holes here. We just wanna get those aligned with our threaded holes. In some situations, those are gonna be drilled out so your holes won't be threaded. If that's the case, be sure you use a nut on the bottom side. You can see we're also using a flat washer and a lock washer to make sure these don't back out over time. Now we'll use a 9 16 that's the typical size for a 3 8 bolt, and get these snugged up. Then we'll get each bolt torqued down. Now with those snug down, we can just reinstall our foot plate. Now you'll notice here that there's four holes on the drop leg. These are separated by an inch and a half. So this is gonna give us a total of four and a half inches of travel. It's gonna save a lot of work on our jack and a lot of time us waiting for it to get there. So you'll just wanna align those holes, slide through the pin and secure it there with our clip. Now to test it out, we'll just plug in our seven pole to our plug here. As you do, there is this little tab right here. You want to make sure it goes behind the catch that's on every seven pole door. Just make sure it doesn't come out of there. Then we'll extend that jack down. We'll let it support the weight and we can get rid of those jack stands. We're also going to have lights designed on each side. You can see we've got one here, one in the same spot here on the other side. Red button here on the back, you'll press that. That's going to light up. Those are going to illuminate the side connection areas here if you're doing weight distribution. Also going to shed a little bit of light on that coupler to help you make your attachments. Now when comparing these lights to other jacks, I think you know, clearly it's pretty light in here now. They don't have that large of an effect when it was completely dark outside. I think they do better, but there are certainly jacks out there that offer stronger LEDs if you need more light in your situation. And that's going to complete our look at the Byers 12-volt electric A-frame trailer jack, part number 337-009-3500.